So hi, hello and welcome, Micro Hunter here and uh, today in this video I'd like uh, to show you some common water microorganisms. So in other words, I'd like to give you a little bit of an identification help because especially if you're not yet quite familiar with the water life, you might wonder what are you able to see under the microscope and well, that's why I'm here and in this video I'd like to show you some common water microorganisms. Well, and we're going to start off uh, with the first one here. This is paramecium. It's a very common one. It's a single celled ciliate um, and uh, ciliates what they have is they have tiny little hair um, on the surface of the cell you maybe are able to see them how they beat and how they move and uh, those hair are responsible for not only moving the cell around the water but they can also be used uh, to gather food and here we already see one of them dividing and you can see here that uh, they are still connected a little bit at the cilia um, that's basically at the hair but usually of course you can find many other uh, water microorganisms, many other ciliates rather in, in a water sample and for this reason I'm going to show you a few more examples uh, today and that's the next ciliate. That is also known as a so-called bell animalcule and it's also known as vorticella. It's also a single cell. Well, here we see two of them. And uh, those little dots that you see swirling around, these are bacteria and also some cellular debris, which are basically parts of cells. And by beating those little hair, then it, again, it's able to generate a water stream um, in which it's able to collect food. And here we can see it quite nicely. That's actually why it's called vorticella, because it's able to create a water vortex, a water swirl. And look at this. <laughs> yeah, um, They have this remarkable ability to very quickly also retract when they disturbed and if you're very lucky you're also able to see a whole colony of them uh, where when one of them starts to contract uh, then this triggers the others also to quickly uh, contract uh, at the same time. Yeah those uh, ciliates are basically single celled but there are also water microorganisms in there that are true animals. This here is actually an animal. Um, it is not a single cell. The organism anymore is called a rotifer. And uh, rotifers um, yeah, have a fixed number of cells and I read somewhere around a thousand cells. So these are not, uh, actually strictly speaking, they're not microbes anymore because they're made of multiple cells. And this one over here, if you look carefully, yeah, even carries along what appears uh, to be an egg. Um, they do share a similarity with the ciliates in the sense that they have also those tiny little hairs here. The cilia, um, yeah, in this case, are uh, connected uh, to their head and this way they're also able to generate this water stream um, to uh, catch food and of course as you can see those uh, rotifers are also able to attach uh, to a surface. Yeah, let's move on over now uh, to the plants. It's a single-celled alga. alga. Uh, it, these are diatoms. And then, of course, you see another rotifer <laughs> moving around here. And those diatoms, uh, they generally have uh, either a greenish or a brownish color. And uh, this is because uh, they are doing photosynthesis. So they're catching sunlight and uh, they are therefore um, able to generate their own food. And uh, those uh, diatoms, they have a nice, uh, beautiful uh, shell, um, usually uh, made of silica, which is uh, glass. Uh, and uh, this uh, is uh, also a very easy way how you're able to identify them. Yeah, And here you see also a few of them inside um, a water droplet. As a matter of fact, uh, those diatoms are able to create a very large number uh, a very large amount of oxygen. Yeah, but not all algae are diatoms. Uh, here, these are um, also single celled algae that are not diatoms. And uh, yeah, here we also see them that they're quite green. Uh, yeah, green, of course, is the color um, of chlorophyll, which is needed uh, to catch uh, sunlight. And uh, just like the diatoms, uh, they are um, also some, some of them at least are able to also move around. And there are many different shapes here. And these are just uh, yeah, simply examples of what you're able to find here. But there are a couple of uh, those uh, green algae that are quite uh, beautiful looking like this one over here. Yeah, and uh, they are in small tiny colonies uh, as well. And uh, if you look at a water sample um, and uh, then you're able sometimes to see quite a few different shapes here. Yeah, again, back to an animal, you see that uh, the sequence and the order of uh, those uh, video clips is not uh, uh, quite uh, organized here. But this here is um, a so-called uh, an oligoheat worm. And uh, these are worms that have tiny little bristles uh, here on the, on the outside, uh, pointing outside. And uh, those tiny little hair, of course, help uh, the worm to move. Um, well, are they actually microscopic? You can see them without any problems, also without a microscope. 
microscope. But with a microscope, you're actually able to see much deeper into their body and therefore you're able to see also the organs here. And those little dots that you see, well, these are bacteria. Okay, and uh, here I'm using the phase contrast uh, and this one again is in bright field. And those bacteria are significantly smaller than many of the other water micro microorganisms. And uh, here, what we see is uh, these are spiral-shaped bacteria. Almost looks like, I don't know, yeah, almost like tiny little worms. Uh, yeah, some of them are not so good. Yeah, they can actually, you, they might be able to cause diseases as well. You always have to be careful when you're uh, dealing with uh, bacteria where you do not know what they actually are. Uh, but in this case, there are quite a few of them. And uh, as soon as you have uh, some decomposing material in, in a water sample, then you're easily able to find all the bacteria. Yeah, here, this is a flatworm, again, an animal. So you see that we're jumping around from multicellular to single cellular to multicellular um, organisms here. A flatworm, uh, they are completely smooth, unlike, uh, for example, uh, the oligoheat worms that I showed you before. Yeah, they have uh, basically, they are pretty um, aggressive hunters, at least some of them. They have a mouth and then they're able to gulp up uh, the food. Uh, usually they eat others. Uh, cells uh, like paramecia that I've uh, shown you before. Yeah, they like to be devoured. Um, and uh, then they spit out the undigested material again. Yeah, and here yet another type of worm. This is a so-called a nematode worm. Uh, there are many of those um, around. And those nematode worms, um, yeah, they are um, essentially, uh, yeah, quite uh, actively moving around like this here. That's usually how you're able to find them and how you're able to see them. And they too, they decompose, of course, uh, organic material. They release enzymes uh, to break down here a lot of, quite a lot of them. But of course, they also have a digestive system where they're able to take up, uh, they're able to take up uh, tiny uh, particles as, as well. These are so-called vinegar eels. I've been actually growing them at home. They actually serve as fish food. And here are two interesting organisms, the large uh, round structure that's uh, also a rotifer, but let's focus a little bit on the smaller cells, on the three smaller cells, three or four smaller cells. These are called flag flagellates. And you see that there's this tiny, not tiny, actually quite long, thin, um, yeah, string-like extension. It's called a flagellum. Um, yeah, it's uh, made of protein, and uh, this is basically how they are also moving around. We move on very quickly. Amoeba, again, a different uh, uh, protist here in time-lapse here. Um, and uh, those amoeba are also single-celled, and what they do is this uh, they are able to change their shape and this is how they are able to hunt down um, smaller organisms uh, as a source of food. And what I like here especially is that you're able to look into the cell. You can see the things that it has eaten and uh, there are also a whole bunch of diatoms visible uh, that uh, the yeah, amoeba has eaten. Filamentous algae, <laughs> back uh, to uh, those organisms that are related to the plants here. Yeah, you see that uh, they are filamentous because they appear in long strings and those round air bubbles that you see well actually are oxygen bubbles because of those algae, they produce of course also a lot of oxygen by photosynthesis. Yeah, and those algae are quite nice, uh, especially if you look into them because sometimes you can see there is this spiral shaped uh, yeah, chloroplast and that's called spirogyra. And uh, this is a uh, very common water algae as well. But this not, not, not this one, of course. <laughs> that's uh, a water flea, uh, crustaceans. Now they're related to the crabs. I think they look kind of cute. And look at this. I, I like this one here. <laughs> crawling along up and down the algae here. And uh, those water crustaceans um, are also tiny animals, obviously. Um, they lay eggs, uh, they reproduce this way. And what do they feed on? Well, again, they feed on smaller bacteria um, and uh, debris, which are particles. Yeah, and they, together with uh, many other animals, are making sure that uh, ma biological material is uh, being decomposed uh, in a water sample. And this actually completes already <laughs> the video here. Um, of course, there are many more things uh, that you're able to find, but I hope uh, that with this video, it helped you find, uh, at least identify uh, some of the most uh, important or most common water microorganisms here. And if you want to see a little bit more um, about some water microorganisms, then I would like to recommend that you watch uh, this video here. I wish you all the best. Happy microbe hunting as always and uh, see you around next time. Bye-bye.